episode one that we're entitling Wood. Um, I feel it's an important subject to cover before we get into the woodwork, before we start milling, before we start joinery, before we start doing anything that has to do with building furniture or building things out of wood. I feel we need to learn about the material itself. Hey, you wouldn't be a writer if you didn't understand the language in which you wanted to write. You wouldn't be a painter if you didn't understand oil paints and how it's going to react on the canvas. And you sure as heck shouldn't be a woodworker if you don't understand wood and how wood is going to behave, uh, what it's going to do under certain circumstances, how we can glue it, how can we join it, how can we finish it, how can we sand it. We need to know what wood is and how it's going to react before we can start all of that. So we're going to take you back a little bit, maybe to biology class, high school biology class. Um, maybe you don't love the subject, but you're going to love this, because this is going to tell you why wood behaves the way it behaves. And this is going to be ongoing information. I'm going to give you information here that you may not catch all of, and it may not sink in entirely, especially since it's not hands-on. This is something that's going to happen inside of your brain. I'm giving you information that somewhere down the road, as we're woodworking, something's going to click and say, hey, I remember that. I remember when I was taught that. And now it makes perfect sense. A lot of what I'm going to say today will make perfect sense, but somewhere down the road, it's going to make more sense. Uh, it's the same thing as um, doing arithmetic. If, if you learn that 2 plus 2 is 4, you learn that 2 times 3 is 6, but then you build on that so that you're doing calculus later on, you're doing uh, higher math later on, you're building on the fundamentals. So what I'm giving you today is the fundamentals of wood um, from a cellular structure to how it's going to behave. And you're going to take that information, and the more you go throughout your woodworking career, the more you're going to understand what it is I'm teaching you today. So it's going to be a great foundation. You've got to have it before you can move on. How else will you know what joint to use? How else will you know how to join two pieces of wood together? How will you know which way to sand something? Uh, what kind of finish to put on it? You can't know that until you know wood itself. So we're going to get started, all right? So we're going to start on a um, uh, sort of a molecular level first. I have here a bundle of dowels. Um, to represent wood on a, on a microscopic level. This would be better if this were a bundle of straws, but I'm a woodworker, so I've got dowels. I don't own a, a diner, so I don't have a bundle of straws here, but the dowels will work just fine. So if you picture a piece of wood on a microscopic level, this is what you've got here. These straws, um, on a scientific level, and you won't be quizzed later, so don't worry about remembering this, they're called lumens. And a whole bunch of these bundled together, these are all microfibrils. And the space, there are spaces between, there are cell walls around the straw, but this is the, this is the microscopic level of what wood looks like. Now, the most important thing that you need to realize about wood is that, no, it's not the romantic living, breathing thing. Once you cut down a tree, it's dead, and the wood you're working with is dead. But what it will continue to do throughout its life, um, as you've turned it into furniture, um, before you turn it into furniture, it is going to react with the environment around it. It is going to exchange moisture. It's going to take on moisture if put into a more humid situation. It's going to eject moisture if put into a drier situation. And that is the key thing that I want you to learn today. That it exchanges moisture, takes it in and takes it out. How it happens, why it happens, is what I'm about to teach you. Down, it's at a very, very high moisture content. It may be 100% moisture content. What that really means at 100% is that the amount of moisture in the wood equals in weight the weight of the tree. 150% moisture content would mean that the water in the tree weighs one and a half times the weight of the wood, and so forth and down. 50% moisture content would mean that it weighs half, and so on and so forth. Once a tree is cut down, and the lumber is milled and then sent to a kiln, hopefully, when you get it, by the time you get it as a woodworker, um, it's been kiln dried. So its moisture content is going to hover somewhere between 6 and 9 percent as, as kiln dried lumber, somewhere maybe around 12 percent as air dried lumber. And the reason this is important to know is because at that stage, at 6 to 8 percent, 6 to 9 percent, 12 percent moisture content, all of the moisture that was in these lumens, inside of these straws, is gone. That water is gone and that moisture is gone, hopefully never to come back again. But the moisture that we're worried about, which is called the bound moisture or the bound water, is that water or moisture that hangs out between these straws, that hangs out in the cell walls of these straws. Because it's that moisture that affects the size of the wood. It's that moisture change that will cause the wood to shrink or expand. Now, when a board is at its fiber saturation point, that means, strictly speaking, that the moisture in the wood has completely filled the microfibril space, it has completely filled the cell walls, but there is no moisture inside of the lumens. It, it's, at, it's at its saturation point. 
which means the wood is at its largest, its largest size at that point. It's when the moisture starts to leave these cell walls, it starts to leave the microfibrils, that the wood will begin to shrink. And this is the important part. So at 6 to 9, 12% moisture content, it's going to have an amount of moisture that you should be used to. That that's, that's the amount of moisture that's going to be in this board when you get it from your lumber supplier, from the lumber yard, from wherever. It's going to be at a 6, 6 to 8% of kiln dry, 12% of air dry. And you're going to work with this wood. You're going to build something out of it. And then this wood is going to move into a situation, into someone's house. It may move into your finish room. It may hang out in your shop for a little while. Uh, whatever the case is, this wood is going to adjust to the atmospheric, to the relative, relative humidity that is around it. And when that happens, the size of the wood is going to change. So this wood that has moisture in it, again, we're looking at the cellular structure here, all the moisture is trapped between these lumens. It's inside of the cell walls. And, and we take this board and we've milled it to this effect, and we take it inside uh, to a house that's dry, maybe the winter time, the heat might be running. It's going to slowly, over time, and not a long time, but not in a moment, it's going to start to eject this water. It's going to try to reach an equilibrium. It'll have an equilibrium moisture content. It's going to try to get eject where it's ejected all of its moisture. It doesn't need to eject anymore. And it's trying to become to, at equilibrium to its surrounding environment. When it ejects that water, this board is going to shrink. The space between the microfibers will get smaller, and this board is going to shrink. It shrinks across the grain. Likewise, a board that is dry, introduced into a more humid situation, is going to take on moisture. And it's going to take on moisture through the ends of the lumens here, for sure, but also just through the cell walls. And as it takes on moisture, that moisture is going to fill the space between the microfibrils. It's called hydrogen bonding. It's going to fill with moisture, and it's going to force these lumens apart. And this board is going to grow, and it's going to grow in width across the grain like this. And it's that growth and that shrinkage that we need to worry about. As wood. So let's talk about wood on the uh, reality level here. We have a board of cherry here that's about 12 inches wide, about 30 inches long. It's grown like this. Its, its cells, structure, its lumens are growing in this way. Um, you can actually see that in some woods. If you looked at the end grain, this is the end grain. If you looked at the end grain of some woods, oak, for example, um, wenge, I don't know if you're familiar with wenge, but wenge is one, where you can actually see the cellular structure. You can see the straws because they're, they're large enough that you can see them with the naked eye. You can actually see the straws on some of those woods. So the straws are grown, the lumens are, are in this direction. When the lumens take on moisture, that is, when this board, which is now at, at an equilibrium moisture content, when it takes on moisture, when the relative humidity around this board is higher than the board itself, this board is going to expand in this direction. It's going to move in this direction and become larger in this direction. It's also going to grow in this direction, although it, it'll feel like not as much because we're only starting at about an inch wide in the first place, so it's going to expand a little bit. But it's going to grow in this direction and it's going to grow in this direction. It is not going to grow in this direction. It's not going to grow in its length. That's called longitudinal. And it's not going to grow in that direction. Reality is it does grow, but so very little that it's negligible. It's negligible in every time you build furniture. Um, you don't ever have to concern yourself with the growth that happens in the longitudinal direction. You do need to concern yourself with growth across the width. And that's the reality of wood. So now you understand why wood shrinks and expands. It's because on the cellular level that moisture goes into the space between the microfibrils, into the cell walls, through hydrogen bonding, it enlarges that space between these lumens and these straws, causing moisture to cause this wood to grow across the grain like this. In the same respect, put into a dry situation, the moisture escapes, it's pushed out, and that space between these lumens gets smaller and this board gets tighter. Why do we have to concern ourselves with that in the woodworking industry? Uh, very easily, actually. Very simple. The explanation is simple. Because we're always joining one piece of wood to another piece of wood. Let's say we're talking about building a table, and we have to join aprons to legs. The apron needs to be able to shrink and expand. The legs need to be able to move. And in, in the most important situation, in a tabletop situation, is a solid wood tabletop that may be 30 inches wide, it may be 44 inches wide, it may be 5 feet wide, whatever width you're making this tabletop. 
that tabletop is going to shrink and expand. And at that size, at 44 inches, 48 inches, it has a movement, depending on species, of maybe as much as a quarter of an inch. And if you bind that wood, if you, put, if you join that wood in such a way that you hinder that wood's ability to move, that, that wood's ability to, to shrink and expand, then you're going to cause a problem with the wood. Either it's going to crack or it's going to blow a joint. In the next episode, we'll continue a little bit more about the shrinking and expansion of wood.